Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Luang Prabang. have to show you this hotel but before I do just an update on how I got here um, so I took the train so that's the new bullet speed train the Lao China Railway from Vang Vieng it only took an hour so it was really really quick so just a quick comment on that regardless of what your political opinions are one thing that I've noticed from my experience is this railway is life-changing for people on a journey that would take five hours to drive on the roads which are not great, roads which have potholes everywhere, which are gravel, and now being able to get from place to place within Laos for maybe five pounds, it's life-changing for these people, and it's an amazing piece of infrastructure. I'm really impressed, I have to say, with the railway service. On the way from the train station to the hotel, there was a shuttle bus um, service that they run, which goes from the train station to the town centre, that costs 35,000 kip, which is around £1.50, but it doesn't take you to your hotel, it just takes you to the city centre. So I found a guy who said he would do it for 100,000, which is around £4, £4.50. And I would usually tip around 25 to 30,000 anyway, so around £1. So all in all, I kind of just gave him the 100,000 kip, which is £4, took me directly to my hotel in a nice air conditioned van, and I am happy with that. But I need to show you this hotel. So it's like a resort complex, but it's, I don't know, it's just beautiful. <laughs> it's really nice. So this resort cost me 70 pounds a night, which is around 85 US dollars, um, but it's, it's stunning. So we come in, and I'm gonna close the door because there's AC out otherwise. First things first, we've got a toilet, standard stuff, you need a toilet, it's important. Got your nice sink. There is a bathtub. And just in case you don't want to have a bath, there's also a shower. Just in case you want to have both a bath and a shower. Right after each other. Then we come in to the room. Very, very big room. Big bed. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Feng Shui is just on point. And then there's just like this. I just don't know what it is, but I like it. <laughs> right, and then we've got kind of like a terrace. And I think, to be honest, I think all the rooms are kind of like connected. You could go to the rest of them. But it's just like, wow, 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 wow. And then you've got the pool. A view of the pool, but also of the view in the background. We already know the story in Bang Vieng, how it's not that luxurious and how, you know, I, I was having issues with that. Um, this is more like it, <laughs> frankly, but I'm very excited to be here. Um, I am very sunburned and it's, it's very painful actually for me to move my arms. So we're going to see how we get along in the pool area, but I'm going to give the waterfalls a miss for today. We will go and see them in Luang Prabang, they're the main thing, so the Kuang Si Falls. But first, we're also going to take a day off to go to Nong Kiao. For now, for today, probably not going to do too much because I do not want to expose my arms to any more sun. Okay, so we're just going to be heading out um, into the town now. So because my hotel resort is a little bit far away and they do offer a free shuttle service, so we are going to take advantage of that. Um, we are gonna just explore some of the sites in Luang Prabang town first. So I believe there's a UXO, so those are the bombs that were used in the um, Vietnam War. There's a museum for that. There's also a beautiful temple that I've heard. The only problem is, today is the hottest day that it has been since I have been here in Southeast Asia. So it's a bit of an issue. Also, just a side note, if you are coming by train, either from Vang Vieng, Vientiane or wherever, they do not allow you to bring sprays. So if, even in your suitcase, even in your check-in suitcase, so if you have any perfumes, if you have any deodorant, they will confiscate it from you. 
Um, so just be aware of that because some people may get upset if you bring expensive perfumes and then they take it away from you. So as a result, I have no deodorant, so I also need to go and buy deodorant. So we'll see how that goes. And then in the evening, hopefully, we might go to a sunset restaurant and have a look at the viewpoint as well. Um, by the driver at the Luang Prabang National Museum, also known as the Royal Palace. Um, so have a look. I mean, you can just see it above here. So it's very, very hot. Luang Prabang National Museum. Da -da -da -da. And... Stunning. Look at that. Wow. So let's go inside and see what it's all about. Okay, so very strange. You can't wear shorts, which I am. Um, but they said that you can change into something. So they told me to go to the locker room to, number one, get changed. And number two, to put my camera bag away. And they have a Royal Ballet Theatre as well, which we might go and see. It's very interesting. So obviously Luang Prabang used to be the ancient capital. And I think the entire town is actually considered a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, so we'll walk through later on. So King Srivavang. Sir so, Sri Savang. That's the theatre. I think we'll do that later on. That sounds good. So, um, just went into the museum. Um, I just find it a bit strange. So we had to, obviously you have to cover your legs and your shoulders. So it's, you know, it's like, okay, if you're going into a mosque or a temple, I'd understand. It's, it's a royal palace. Um, it's beautiful inside. It really is. Everything is gold and it reminds me of a bit of like the Lao version of the Dombabachi Palace in Istanbul. Definitely worth coming to, um, definitely beautiful. I don't really understand, I understand you have to take your shoes off. I don't really understand why you have to kind of cover yourself because there is a temple next door to it. However, the temple itself, you can't actually go inside. So I, I was a bit confused. But nevertheless, it's definitely worth coming to. It's a shame you can't take any photos inside because the throne room is itself is stunning. And then the temple itself, which has become quite a, a symbol of this world UNESCO heritage town of Luang Prabang. <laughs> Look at that. That's so funny. Rocker Loom. Yeah, that's. I don't mean to be racist. I'm not racist. I'm just. I just thought that was funny. Because for those of you that don't know, in terms of language, um, I'm not sure about Lao in particular, but I know for Japanese, they don't have a. They don't distinguish between L and R. So they find it very difficult to pronounce things and to hear things as well. They, they can't get the phonics because they've been conditioned to kind of hear the same sound when they hear R or L. So like liver or river, sometimes they hear the same thing. Obviously it depends if they've grown up with English as well. Um, but that's just kind of linguistics and just how, how the brain works. So interesting fact. interesting you can rent a costume kind of like how you do in Korea if anyone ever goes to Korea I mean you can see why it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site it's just very authentic that's that's my word that's my Lao word authentic everything's kind of handmade it's beautiful it really is a beautiful town actually and you can see why it'd be difficult to get planning permission and all that just a nice vibe. The only thing I have to say, I really, and I really have to say this, it is too hot. It's too hot. I've been told that if you come in July and August, it rains every day, all day. That's it. But I'm here at the end of May, like literally tomorrow is June and it's 38 degrees. There's no sun. It was raining in the morning, maybe for 10 minutes and that's it. It is way too hot. So plan accordingly. I, I think probably 
September to April, early May time would be good. I think late May, June is just pure hot and then July and August is rainy season as far as I'm aware from what I've learned. So yeah, just plan accordingly. One thing actually we do need to do is to rent a scooter for the trip to Nongkiao, which we'll be going to tomorrow and then we'll be returning. Oh, look, nice. We'll be returning to Luang Prabang the day after. Just for one day and then we're off to Vietnam. I'm in this restaurant called Opera House. It's vibesy. Oh guys, I'm really exhausted. Honestly, really, really exhausted. It's extremely hot and I have just not been able to do as much as I would have liked in Luang Prabang at the moment. I am coming back here for a day, but I'm going to be taking a lot of the day to go to Quang Si Waterfalls. Now there is a short view with a five minute, not hike, but walk upstairs. Um, I'm just very, very tired right now. It's difficult. I mean, you know, I think it happens when you travel and when you're moving from place to place and I think it's perfectly normal and I think Sometimes with a lot of travel vloggers, you know, you don't you don't see the rough side of traveling sometimes and it's, it's you know, it's unrealistic I think I suppose that's where I would like to be different. You know, I'm just trying to be genuine I'm just literally recording as I am on my holiday frankly um, as I am traveling the world and You do get tired you do have times where you don't want to do anything You just want to sit in the same cafe that you've been to three times already <laughs> because you know that the food is going to be good um, so currently I am sitting at the start of this hill, um, I think it's called Fuzi Hill or something, and there's a temple at the top. It's around 5pm, sunset's at 6.30, we might try and do sunset on the river. I have hired a bike now, um, again with extreme difficulty from my own capabilities, um, but that's, I won't get into that. But no matter how tired you get, you just have to appreciate what's in front of you and the view and I mean just look at this the city is beautiful town it's a town it's so small but it's beautiful have a look so there's the temple by the Grand Palace it's just beautiful I mean I'm just sitting on these benches I've been sitting here for about 45 minutes now because I'm just so tired it's just so tropical and I love it I really, really love it. Sabadi Luang Prabang. Like in Thai, how they say Sabadi, over here they say Sabadi. Right. I think we've sat for long enough and it's time for us to begin our five minute walk. I shan't call it a hike. Actually, first I need to see if I can get water. You know, Mount Fusi gets his name from an old Lao folk story. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I'll be honest, I thought this would be easier. It's jungle, and I would not have it any other way. Apologise if this looks wonky, I tried to fix my phone, I don't know what's wrong with it. Now, one thing which has, I must say, been really irritating me, I'm sorry I look like a wreck, I'm really hot. Um, these phones, Samsung, Apple, I mean they're all rubbish really. They all say, oh they can withstand 80 degrees heat and all this rubbish. I shine my phone here in 40 degrees heat for five minutes and it says, oh, the phone has stopped working because the device is overheating. You can't use camera, you can't use Instagram, you can't use anything. I'm like, what's the bloody point then? And I see people taking their phones into saunas and stuff like that. I just, it's all rubbish, all complete marketing and, ah, oh, breath, sorry, <laughs> consumer branding. 
Um, so don't fall for it. That's when you think a view can't get even more stunning here in Lao. Look at that. Oh, other way. started to accumulate loads of tourists and it was just making it a little bit less special. So I just took my bike and I drove to the nearest river point that I could find, which is a ferry port, I think. Um, so we're gonna watch the sunset from here. There's actually a beautiful opening in the mountains where the sun will set in between them. So yeah, it's absolutely stunning. The sun is reflecting over the river. It's just beautiful. I'm sweating everywhere every single part of my body I feel like I've just been covered in oil and my phone is slipping out of my hands because my palms are so sweaty but I really don't care it's it's just beautiful and you've got some loud music um, Miley Cyrus also playing in the background can't go wrong hey so it's actually I think it's a ferry port because there are people who kind of they put their bikes on there and then they cross the river to the other side so there's the V shape that I was talking about. It's kind of like a setting and then the sun will set from down there. So when the clouds move in a few minutes, I'm sure it's just gonna look beautiful. I think they're like dinner cruises as well, but um, we just ate at around three, so I'm really not hungry. I say we, me. <laughs> That's it, take it away, Miley. So you can see there's a few other people waiting for the sunset. I was actually sitting on these rocks, but because it's so hot, I apologize for being repetitive, but basically the rocks are like a spa rock. <laughs> so I was burning my bum, um, so I had to get up. So far, I think that Luang Prabang is my favorite place in Laos. It's more catered to tourists. There's more luxury options. There's more food options. There's one street where they have all the attractions nearby and they also have the night market there. Um, it's just got a nice vibe about it. I really like it. So far, this is my favorite place. Um, but we are going to Nong Kiao tomorrow, so hold that thought. A dead chicken on a scooter. So they made me park here. It was such a struggle for me to get in, I can't even tell you. Anyways, we're here. So there's quite a lot of food choices here actually. Um, this is at the night market in Luang Prabang by the way, I forgot to say. We've got Korean, uh, Taiwanese, Chinese. It's very busy, full of backpackers. Everyone knows each other. <clears throat> this is interesting, it's like roti but it's like a crepe, it's like sweet. So basically it's a crepe, but they call it a roti. One thing I do need is mango juice, tradition. Okay, lots and lots of options. I went with soup. I actually really fancied tteokbokki, which is like Korean rice cakes and fish. But they didn't have it, so I've gone with wonton soup. Okay, it's really spicy, but it's really nice. <laughs> it's also hot, and it's also hot outside, so I don't know if it's the best thing to do. <coughs> anyway. So we're now going to walk um, into the actual market, which is basically the whole road they've kind of taken over. So going to walk through that. They told me it closes at 10.30, so we'll see. And then after that, we will go back to the hotel. 
but I don't expect it'll be very much different from the other night markets. However, I was very surprised with uh, the food market here. I didn't think, number one, I didn't think they'd have one. Number two, I didn't think it would be as big. But even if you decide you don't want street food, the restaurants on this road, on actually, like on either side of the road, that's my mango juice, they're actually really nice. So I think the food here in Luang Prabang is the best food in Lao that I've had so far. Yes, he is barefoot. <laughs> what's our what's special price for this one? A lot of handmade stuff. It's actually really beautiful. Kind of women's clothes, pillowcases. <laughs> That is the most bougie mango with sticky rice I've ever seen. And of course mango juice. How much did it cost me? Six pounds. Oh, it's about one o'clock in the morning and I was just about to fall asleep and then all of a sudden it starts pouring with rain like it's 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 stopped now actually in comparison absolute torrential rain thunder and lightning non-stop and like the most evil thunder i've ever heard in my life like genuinely scary like really scary <laughs> i sat in bed for like half an hour desperate to pee because i was scared to move it is insane like it's insane i've never ever heard thunder so evil and loud <laughs> in my life it, this is just oh my gosh you can see the lightning it just lights up the night sky It just keeps going, it doesn't end. Okay, so we have arrived at Kwangsi Falls. Um, I just went to the toilet and rather strange, the toilet doesn't have a flush. Instead, there's a bucket with water. So you have to just basically pour the water into the toilet and it, it kind of drains it. There's so many butterflies here, it's beautiful. This whole country is just full of butterflies. All different colors, different species that you've never ever seen before in your life. They're just outstanding. And when they travel, they travel in a line. It's beautiful. So it's probably also worth just telling you guys about how I came here. So this morning I came from Nongkiao. It was three hours this time, not four hours, because I'm just basically more confident with driving the bike. Um, but I woke up at 5 a.m. To, to make that journey. And I had four hours of sleep, really bad sleep, because basically where I was staying didn't have air conditioning, so... I was sleeping in like 35 degrees heat. It had a ceiling fan, but you know, it doesn't, it just blows hot air. Um, so it's kind of like being in the UK in summer. It was not pretty. So that was not great. So I came back to my beautiful hotel in Luang Prabang. Um, and I stayed at the same hotel actually, because I left my luggage there. So when I went to Nongkiao, all I, all I took was a backpack. Um, so that's why I'm staying at the same hotel <laughs> as the butterflies continually attack me. So. Basically, after that three-hour bike ride, I was absolutely exhausted with little sleep, um, absolute just heat exhaustion, and honestly, it was just too much. So I decided that I was not going to drive here to Kwangsi Falls. I was going to get a taxi. So it was actually the guy who picked me up from the train station and took me to my airport, um, took me to my hotel. He said that he does these tours to Kwang Si Falls, so I said, okay, I'll do it. Now, what I didn't know was there'd be 20 other people in the van, so that was a bit stressful. However, I am glad, because actually on the way here, the roads were full of potholes, like absolutely full of potholes. And I was exhausted anyway, and I really did not want to go on the motorcycle, and I just would have broken my butt, frankly. So I'm glad I did come with a tour. However, it's very, very busy at this time. It's around 1 p.m., so it's just really, really busy. So if you do come here, I would say just come at nine o'clock in the morning, frankly, when it's cooler and it's also empty. And maybe it is better to come by yourself. I don't know. 
but just be aware the road to get here from Luang Prabang Centre is just full of potholes, so bear that in mind. here in the pool, I think. I will jump in in a second. Um, I am going to meet my friend Ismail here um, and then I will go swimming because it is extremely hot but I need to put sun cream on actually first because as you can probably tell in the past few videos my face is very red because it's burnt like a crisp. I used to be a potato and now I'm a crisp because I've been burnt. Anyway, that's a nice analogy, I think, but anyway. They are absolutely stunning, like it's absolutely beautiful. It is a shame there's a lot of tourists, but it's just... <laughs> Best place in Laos. Okay, not gonna lie, it's really comfortable. I just want to give two quick speeches, if you like. One first about Luang Prabang. Out of everywhere I've been in Laos, I have to say Luang Prabang is my favourite. It's got the nature, it's got the tourism, it's got the luxury hotels. Um, I just think it's an absolutely beautiful place and it's easy to get to from airports like Bangkok and Hanoi as well. And the second thing is about Laos itself. So I'm obviously leaving tomorrow. This country is extremely, extremely underrated. I think that's that's all I'll say. My word is genuine, authentic. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place. It is a backpacker's destination, there's no denying it. If you are a luxury traveller, if you don't like getting down and dirty, if you don't like adventure, this is not your, the right place for you, frankly. The food is a little bit hard to find food here, but the food is okay. It's, it's not nothing special, um, similar to what you'll get in Vietnam and Thailand but the people here are absolutely beautiful. The scenery and the nature is out of this world, absolutely out of this world. And yes, the Wi-Fi is rubbish and the infrastructure may not be great, although it is up and coming with the Lao China Railway. As a compromise for that, you get the nature, you get untouched beauty, waterfalls, mountains, rivers, everything. This country has absolutely just left me speechless. And although there have been things which I've done, which have been outside of my comfort zone, I would not have had it any other way. So from me here in Laos, I want to say thank you so much for watching this series. Thank you so much to Lao, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video, please subscribe to see more content, not only from Southeast Asia, but from the rest of the world as well. And um, we've got some big trips planned this year, and follow me on Instagram at Prince Amir. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye from Laos.